Hello everybody and welcome once again to another episode of the Charlotte Anime Book Club podcast. Um, you might be... Um, these intros are getting very repetitive now, I should probably spice them up a bit, but whatever. <laughs> welcome, Gypsy, to my secret podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so we have Biscuit Doe and Suika Shoujo joining me here today. Um, I made it. Yay, I'm you alive. made it, Biz. Last week you slipped Con- through it. Contrary to back. popular belief, I, I still exist. Just when you thought I was never <laughs> going to come back, I came back. <laughs> Everyone's back. Um, and yeah, so we don't have any new intros to do, but we do have another 30 second recap. Um, today, Biz is taking us through this one. This week on Charlotte, Proswagonist is all better now because he keeps it real. After heading to school and being summoned for something that you'd think would actually be important, the group is force fed some how low can we go hello and now now reviews it perfectly. Our OTP sets up a date for some puss rock, aka good music, and go about their day until June Mida shows up. Then, after a full day of being the best, tops it off by using the power of music to raise the dead and shit. Sasuga Mida. Sasuga. Sasuga. <laughs> I. Freaking love Sala. She is amazing and Sada, totally Sada, not a Maeda self himself. Oh yeah, we're still Sada, we're still deciding Sada. how Yeah, Sarah. It's we're still deciding the, how the L's in the salad. Salad. <laughs> it's a salad, it's a salad. <laughs> Cannon was right, it's back. Ah, oh, the salad <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this podcast is off to a silly start. Um but, yeah, we don't know how to spell her name in English, because um, they've yeah, been very indecisive not, about that. You, you spell it in Japanese, because that's how it is. But, uh, no, it's in, in the credits, in, yeah, it's in both... Know. It's English. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, like, you, you um, know on the website... Or, 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 whatever. On the website, it's Sala. On the credits of the latest episode, it's Sara. So well, You have to remember your pronunciation, so it's... it's... It's I like know. the L A, or it's it's an R A, but like the R sounds kind of like an L because you got to put your tongue against your teeth, so it's Sada. But the Sada. fact is that she, she is not a Japanese person. Yeah, so I like... know, but you know what? <laughs> Japanese people fucking made it, so that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> the debate will never end, but we need some kind of correct romanization. <laughs> there is no correct yeah. romanization because that it doesn't exist. No. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's say, like trying. We can just, just like compromise. I call her Sarla or Salra or something. I feel Sala. like Sada is probably the closest. That would be my guess. Yes. That would be R A. You know, because that's an closer. actual name. That's an actual name. Yeah, that's probably the closest. Hmm. We might have to change that on the forum. But yeah, just one of the many debates that continues on, like how to spell visual arts, because they can't decide themselves. <laughs> it's giving me a nightmare. It's like, is there an apostrophe in there? Is it two words? Is it one? I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> that's just like my trauma surfacing up here. What do you think of the episode, guys? <laughs> I felt like a lot of people going into this episode, myself included, were, were kind of not feeling uh, the direction going back to a lighter tone. Yeah. Um, which I still feel. Um, but the thing is, is that the episode wasn't necessarily a lighter tone, I don't think. I feel like a lot of the subject matter was still kind of... Uh, shrouded in kind of a, a dark. There's definitely some dark undertones going on. In the yeah, episode, I mean, even though it was kind of fun. I feel like it accomplished a good thing going where it's like they had you returning to the daily life of the high school because they really need to show that. But they also did it in such a way where it's like he's. It's really showed that he's actually evolved as a person after everything has happened. Yeah, and I like I like the fact that whenever he's running around with Sarah and stuff, like that he she she notices because she just sees through everything. Haha, ha, nice pun. Um. <laughs> Like I see what you did there. She uh, did it in the episode. I was just pointing it out. Um, like the thing about her is, she was able to notice, like through his quivers or whatever he was doing, that um, he was still being plagued by whatever had just happened, which most people would be. I mean, they, yeah. they're gonna go back to being normal, but they're just gonna have those moments where they're just like. Uh, I mean, I think yeah, that's exactly. almost—I think that's almost more realistic than if they had just had him yeah. like wallowing in misery for the rest of the series. Because I mean, eventually, exactly. yes. when someone dies, you do eventually have to go back to your real life. I mean, you can't just go around stabbing people with dongo skewers for the rest of your life. You well, have you to can, kind of but... move on. <laughs> and I mean, there's still going to be those little reminders, like, "Oh yeah, I don't have to call home anymore," but life goes yeah. on. He had a really sad look in his eyes at some points too. Yeah, um, I thought that was actually pretty pretty well directed. Yeah. 
Like, the whole, like, you've just had something horrible happen to you scene was, like, that hit me hard. <laughs> like, sure, like, like, Sarah's OP, but... <laughs> the f I did really like how they kind of used that to show how you is coping with Aimee's death and not just, like, you know, trying to gloss it over or anything. See, I call her, I, I call her Dude Mida because she's here to, she's here to drive the, the, the story forward, right? She just kind of pops up <laughs> and she's like, all right, we got to keep it moving. She's she's like addressing all of our all of our plot. See, it's not forced. It's just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that music video was horrible and should never have existed. No, oh, we're gonna go. We're just going right into that. Yeah, that we need really we bad. need to touch on it. Yeah. <laughs> so people are talking about how this episode is forced, right? Um, which. I say is kind of fifty fifty. Some aspects of it are, some aspects of it are some aspect of it aren't. Um Come on, and this. um specifically the aspect of it that is forced to shit is the I mean it's more like filler, it's not really a plot point, is what the fuck was it that music video? Why was it there? Why? Because we Stop need to sell your more CDs. Hello hello advertisements, please. Nobody is buying Hello like, Hello and we need to make them buy it. <laughs> I, 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 as you noticed that I said in the intro, probably, I don't know, I said it kind of fast. So I said, how low can we go? Hello. Because that's some cheap ass <laughs> shit. Just put a music video and like, come on. I mean, the song itself but, wasn't bad, but did they, they didn't need to play the whole thing. They really didn't. But the dog was in it. The dog is oh, bad the guy. Dog. The dog. Oh yeah. The most important piece Koromaru. of symbolism. Can I call the dog Koromaru? <laughs> Wait, no. Koromaru. Didn't, Cannon, didn't Cannon say that the dog was, uh, that's Misa? <laughs> God. Yeah, no, God no, it's obviously me. you from the future, but guys. Come on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's what everyone's saying. The dog is actually the mastermind. <laughs> the yeah, yeah, He's yeah. the one giving them all their powers. The dog's name yeah. is Charlotte. <laughs> 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 but then we realize it's a different dog, and so maybe oh. dogs are the theme of this show. <laughs> the fact that we had to go through the efforts to make sure it was the same dog or not is kind of disconcerting. <laughs> Kazumatsu.org. Join our community today. <laughs> <laughs> we analyze the important things. <laughs> hey, what else were we going to get out of this episode? Oh! <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, um, yeah, I guess we don't need to dwell but, but on that wait, too much. Wait, 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 no, 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 no. We have to dwell for a little bit because I do have to say one thing in its defense. Um, okay. I do have to defend it here. And this is, I guess, kind of almost devil's side. Anyways, um... In my defense of this, the only thing that I can say was added because of this music video, other than it being an advertisement for the Please Buy the Hello Hello CDs, um, was that there was a fun little dialogue after it. I thought that was entertaining. <clears throat> Specifically, now knows review. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was a nice little, nice little bit. Yeah, that part was nice. Nice now. And it, yeah, well, the music, that's, that's the issue. It's like the music video dragged on, but what it did is it set up kind of no, no, being like, who was he in? Who's the best? And let's go to a concert. I think my favorite part was <laughs> it's when, like, when it's almost like when they're like, what, where they're like, what the hell is post rock? And they and they like Google it, and they still can't look figure out what Wikipedia. it is. <laughs> look it up on Wikipedia. No, oh, that was a great joke. Uh, <laughs> Love that. But like, um, that, that's like, I don't understand what this means. I still don't get it. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, what was really cool is obviously it's like it's like she she walks them in right and I feel like this is a nice little now now development here. She walks them in and shows them the hello hello video right, and then says hey let's go to a Zen concert. It's almost like she's uh, what what is that is it like the the foot in the door technique or some shit or whatever, where it's like <laughs> or like low balling it maybe it's low balling where they're just like here look at this stupid shit now let's go watch the end. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's, it's like how like hello is like the now. opening act. Yeah, it's like she's setting them up. <laughs> and oh, the end so is good. like the main event. <laughs> God damn it! It's all part of Maya's extended troll. <laughs> uh, but um, let's. I feel like I feel like we should focus more on the second half of the episode. Um, with Sa and everything that happens there. Um, yes. wasn't that like um, Yuichi's voice actor came back? Yeah, he was the dude in the shop. Yeah. <laughs> and somehow um, recognized Sarah Hi by the fact that she was... Or whatever the fuck he was saying. hi yo hi yo hi yo <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, we had him turn up and 
Yeah, the rest of the episode. Um, a lot of people, not a lot of people, there's a vocal minority that reckon the interactions between Sala and you are forced. Um, I want to talk about that a little bit. How do you guys feel about that dynamic? Disagree. I, I disagree okay. with that. Um, they, they felt pretty natural to me, especially because Sala's just kind of a weirdo. Um, and I feel like she's more, there's more to her than she puts on. Um, even though she, it's very, very obvious that there is more. So it's kind of, anyways, um, from like a, from you's perspective, her being kind of weird compared to our perspective of her being kind of weird or like different. Um, yeah. So like, I feel like she's, she's kind of mysterious, but I feel like you're supposed to feel like she's kind of mysterious, which would in turn make it feel a little unnatural. Um, mm-hmm. But I noticed, like, for example, a lot of people were talking about, like, well, why, did, why did she just walk up? That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't happen. Um, yeah, I've yeah. been to a... I actually cannot count how many concerts I've been to in my life. And about 80 to 90% of the time I go to a concert uh, before I actually go to the venue and I'm just walking around the town or whatever because we're just hanging out, I end up seeing one, if not all, of the different performers in town at different places. Mm-hmm. The last yeah. concert I went to, um, we stopped at this weird little sandwich shop, like just down the road, and like three of the band members for the show that we were going to just walked in <laughs> and we were eating fucking sandwiches and hanging out and talking shit. So it definitely happens. Yeah, I I don't think there's anything unrealistic about that. Yep. Yeah. The fact that she's a blind person walking around alone, unescorted in Japan is obviously weird. But she's that a just fucking baller. That that's why. Yeah, she's a fucking weird character, and she she's doesn't give a shit. She's just a weirdo, man. <laughs> like you do see that scene at the end where she's like getting dragged oh away. Oh my by god, her. I love oh, yeah. that. Uh, <laughs> the management just busting her balls because <laughs> she was being stupid and not actually preparing for the next day. <laughs> yeah. So that's yeah, that's, like it's not like they ignored the fact that this is a very weird situation. It's just that she is a weird character, and that's kind of it to be expected, I guess. Sasagasa. <laughs> Um, so I guess we'll talk about Nas brother now. Oh, our deus ex. Yeah. People are not very happy about this, I suppose. Um, I, know, I thought but... it was a decent enough scene. I, okay. like, I thought it was emotional, at least. It got first me. of all, first of yeah, all, it got me. a very, very big issue a lot of people have been having about Hello, Hello, and the end is that they can't, there's no connection between the music and the actual, like, scenes. Um, because they're just kind of releasing music and they're not actually like pairing it to anything. Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. This was freaking awesome. Um, It put a lot of character into that song and like, that was so good. Like, I really liked the scene. And another thing is like... That's how you sell music. (laughs) Yeah, that was fucking awesome. And like, there was this thing about how, well, it doesn't make any sense that it would bring him out of whatever he's in. But, Mm -hmm. like, that's that dude's lifeblood, man. Like, whenever he was not in whatever state he's in now, like, all he, like, lived and breathed was that band and his future and music and things like that. Yeah. So I feel like that's very justified. Uh, And the other thing is, is we don't really know the extent of what that really did to him. All we got out of him was he said, no, oh, like that's that's yeah. it. that's all we fucking got. Like yeah, exactly. I wouldn't necessarily call that, you know, he had, like, perfectly healed. Yeah, if he had like come up and started like speaking complete sentences and fully aware yeah, of everything like, that had happened, yeah. that'd be one thing, but Yeah, exactly. I agree. But I feel I mean, like people like, are exaggerating real... the extent to which this um song is like it's not so much mystical healing power as it is like, oh maybe like this actually reached him on some level and And, yeah, like, and, and I mean like even in real life even in real life there's like people who will go around and like volunteer in hospitals and like sing to people who are in comas and stuff. I mean it's something that people do in real yeah. life and seems to have some kind of effect. So it's not like it's completely There are also yeah, made up. Are, like in comas or like in vegetative states that just every now and then they, they come out and they'll say something or they'll yeah. move a limb or these there's these small things that are attributed as breakthroughs that may not actually be breakthroughs, yeah. but it's at least a, a sign that there's somebody in there, maybe. Exactly. Yeah. And I feel that's that's really important. Um just showing that, you know even if it's not a full recovery, the fact that there is like still someone in that, you know, body that's, you know, there's these, still traces of the old brother. These two scenes were like, um, 
really really uh or these these couple scenes were really really great in developments for like all of the characters um first off you have now who is just kind of like i don't really care whatever it's just the music it's just a connection blah 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 blah, blah. and she doesn't really know what it is that you is actually doing um you have you who's actually making an active effort to try to make a change now like he's actually trying to do something um because he wasn't before he was just kind of going day to day and now he's actually like thinking about big pictures and stuff and he's trying to actually do good and then you have uh Sarah who's just kind of like doesn't even know these people but she really or seemingly doesn't know these people um and she's caring she's like oh well this is you know because i mean i don't think there's a lot of rumors going on about whether or not she had a power at some point or not i think she did yeah um there's a lot of signs pointing towards the fact that she probably did but anyways yeah um so that she probably understands what exactly is going on and i mean she is where she is and i'm pretty sure you probably explained a few things to her um yeah but like she's there's no she doesn't hold back like to do something for the guy and i think that that was really good um and i wanted to yeah. point out towards the very end um you never this two things in the directing that were really 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 really, 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 really well done um first off you never see now's face whenever yeah you call her right so you don't actually know what she's expressing and as we know about now she's kind of been very sporadically expressive um but we don't know what her genuine expression was towards what was happening during this. She could have been smiling. She could have been crying. We, you don't know. They're um, saving that for the finale. <laughs> you don't, yeah, you don't really know what she was doing in those scenes, which was no, really I think good. We're and, definitely going to get another uh, uh, scene where, oh, no, she's crying. Now we have to cry. Like, she's a strong one. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. Break the key. Um, exactly, exactly, exactly. See, you're on the same page as me. This is really yep. good. Um, it's mm. also a Mida trip. Anyways. Um, the other thing that happens is after everything is said and done and you calls her back again, and again, you don't see her face, um, that voice acting though. Mm, yeah. That voice yeah. acting was so good because again, you is the strong, you now is the strong character and you usually don't get a whole lot of expressiveness out of her, especially like in her voice and things. But you could hear that quiver in her voice where she's like, you know that she has some genuine, like, astonishment or thankfulness or something in there. She was holding she something was back, yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, that was really good. That was such a yeah. good scene. Mm-hmm. Good, good. Um, yeah, um, basically what you said. <laughs> Still in the show, <laughs> it. I had to, I just had to put all of that out there about the whole, like, last the second half or the last third of that episode was just all like brilliant the build-up was so good and i just loved it so whenever i saw a lot of people who were talking about like they're just like i'm not feeling i'm feeling it maybe they didn't but i just man i loved that shit that was awesome i thought it made up for the first half of the episode mm. that made me so that made me feel so good yeah i felt really good after watching it i wasn't expecting it to like it as much as i did yeah i was really shocked yeah. like that it really got me i was like wow that was amazing I'm really sorry that we can't, like, show more of the contrary opinion here, because we all seem to really like this episode. Yeah. There are other people that could have been on this episode who didn't like it so much, but, yeah. Them's, Maybe them's the breaks, I guess. Yeah. Um, so I guess we should move more on to, like, speculation-related stuff. Um, oh, but before I do, I just want to comment that people keep comparing her to Iwasawa. There's a lot of speculations that, oh, this is actually tied to Angel Beats, and it was, and Sala is actually Iwasawa actually, after she got reincarnated. I'm like, stop. Fucking stop comparing this to Angel she Beats. May, I'm trying to make may, the connection. She may have Marina singing for her. She may have red hair. She may be voiced by Sawa Shiro. But not an angel beast and she's definitely not even solid they have very 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 different uh drives and characters yeah i agree very yeah. different i mean yeah comparing to angel beats sure you can call this better than angel beats all you like but they're not the same show <laughs> i mean yeah they're both the best characters in their respective shows but yeah <laughs> Man, so you got a great opinion right you, you, you just you just racking up those biz points oh down. yes yeah Branding. <laughs> that's it <laughs> That's what I'm going for. <laughs> gonna gonna cash in those bins points for some massive. Yeah. Do I get a prize? 
some mysterious prize, what will it be? <laughs> Even anyway. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And um, so, yeah. Um, Sala's story. That's kind of interesting. The whole about, like, a... She, like, cheated and, like, gambled away her eyesight. It's all very cryptic and weird. Um, to God, of course. Oh, to God, of course, <laughs> yeah. The delivery of that line was so good. Savashiro, you're yeah. the fucking best. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're meant to have any idea what's going on there, but, you know, as a lot of people are saying, maybe it has something to do with, like, superpowers. Like, maybe that's why she was, like, used to be really successful. And and then, um, Suika, you brought up the whole thing about siblings oh yeah um i mean i, I actually I, I remember making Holy a reference shit. to this last time i was on um Sorry. where everybody has a sibling and the sibling ties are all really important like i mean mm-hmm. i there's ayumi and you there's a there's their obvious connection there's now and her brother now there's mm-hmm. um sala making a reference to her brother and then there's you's older brother there's so many sibling relationships in here like i mm. can't help but wonder if that's I just no. thought of the something. overarching theme. Wait a second. But it, like, wait a goddamn second. Okay, so it. she said she had a brother that was kidnapped. If her brother had a power, she was, she was stolen by the scientists. Mm-hmm. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> well, yeah. it's, better, it's better than Cannon's theory that um she's actually used older sibling. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I mean, um, it it kind of seemed like they had some kind of connection just by some of the stuff that she was yeah. saying, like that they had met before at least. I don't know about being the sibling, the older sibling, mm. but I can see, I can see where you're where where you'll be coming from on there being some sort of past connection that neither one of, that he doesn't remember. I'm actually mm. like now I'm now I have an expectation, son of a bitch, because now <laughs> now I feel like we we have I, there has to be some explanation there. There's there's a hole there, and I need to know what Don't the worry. purpose is. It can't just we'll, be there for the sake of theme. There has to be something there. No, we'll definitely get more Sara in future episodes. I'm pretty convinced of that. And this is okay. Yes. Another thing about um another thing that. Okay, but we need is, to go back to Suiga's point. Sorry. <laughs> I don't Thank know. You. I feel like I I feel like I've had said it already. I mean. But yeah, I, I want to like add on to that. It's just like, yeah, this is like the first key story we really have where sibling relationships have been such a huge focus. Um, yeah, I mean, like, they, like they've shown up before, but this is this is kind of siblings are kind of to Charlotte what friendship was to Little Busters in a way. Yeah, and, yeah. and like what what like parents are like to Clonard, basically. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I definitely feel that way. Um, yeah, I guess that's like our next big. Um, relationship theme for the story definitely it's like all these comparisons drawn like even in the early series like oh what if something happened to ayumi and like i ended up becoming like now like that was one of the first things he said um and oh look what ended up happening <laughs> yeah i think he, he actually said that what if something happened to him and now ended up or ayumi ended up being like now yes yeah, so, so, yeah. sorry yeah 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 but it kind of went in a different direction yeah well anyway as you were saying biz oh was, um about uh i wanted to touch on uh people were talking about the content of this episode and like what some of the issues were in regards to character development and pepe actually mentioned this and i want to say it too that sela is really good and i wanted to bring it up again as i had said before that i'm severely troubled by us getting these seemingly side characters with the amount of time that we have and whether or not Mm -hmm. they're going to actually be presented fully in a way that feels meaningful because I feel like there's a lot to her character and like I said there's there's more I want to know now and I really wish we had gotten her sooner that's a concern like Mm -hmm. I feel like if and when we do get something it better be presented really well or we're gonna have a problem and they're gonna need to dedicate like a half an episode to that shit that's that's a lot. That's a concern I keep having with this series is yeah. that we keep getting these awesome like yeah. new characters and developments that are explored way get, too late. It's just going to get even harder yeah. if, if the the Brotherhood are actually any good. Like it's really going to start troubling me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But no, we had to have a whole episode focusing on the flying guy in the forest. 
Yeah. And so... the baseball episode, right? So <laughs> that. <laughs> Well, of course, the baseball episode had to happen. You mentioned you mentioned negatives, <laughs> and I feel like while it is kind of based in positivity, because I do really like Silas' character, I feel like that is a very, very valid concern, and that anyone saying that they are still concerned about the pacing of the series and don't think that it's going to be able to pull itself out, totally valid. Yeah. Yeah, I'm remaining casually optimistic at this point, but at the same time, I'm. I'm worried there's only a few episodes left, and I st- I'm still not sure where it's going to go. Usually by now, there's some kind of goal that you're working yeah. towards. That, well, that's what, kind of what I was thinking. Like, at the very end of the episode, we have this um, last scene where it's like, um, you know, the concert's coming up. And it, it just I just got a really ominous feeling. It's like, oh, something bad is going to happen at that concert. I am yeah. almost certain. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's just like... The one thing I came out from that episode was like, ooh, something that's ominous. Like, it wasn't directly, but just the way it was, like, presented there and, like, how we're building up to it, it's like, shit's gonna go down. And I think that's gonna, like, kind of set the tone for the rest of the series. Um, that's the kind of impression I got when I watched that. Like, um, we need that hook. We need something to keep us watching and, like, give this, bring this whole story together. And I feel like that concept, something's gonna happen. Maybe the scientists show up or something, but I don't know. Something will happen. Yeah. Yep. Alright, I guess um I guess we'll wrap this up. So um thanks once again for joining us for this episode, um episode eight encounter. And um next week we'll be here to talk about episode nine, The World Is Not In Here. Um I don't know about that translation, but whatever. <laughs> um, wrong. Probably. probably wrong. Um but yeah, um I apologize to the, anybody listening that we actually did get this episode out late and that episode's already aired by now. Um you may have seen it. But um don't worry about that. <laughs> um we'll be there next week to cover it all and we hope you enjoy our coverage because yeah, hopefully we'll have a lot to say about that. Alright, everybody listening, thanks for joining us. Um thanks Biz and Suka for joining me again here and um My pleasure. we'll see you all next week. Bye everybody. Hi, y'all.